Nah, let's just get SightLock installed. Hey everybody, Joe Workman, and in this video I'm really excited. We're gonna be doing soup to nuts, right? That's the expression, right? Yeah, soup to nuts for getting SightLock installed, right? From beginning to end. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna do a fresh install of SightLock, get it, get it in there, do a very light kind of walkthrough through the user interface, and then we're gonna jump into RapidWeaver and use the SightLock stacks to integrate SightLock into our RapidWeaver projects. So really excited. Without further ado, let's jump in. Now, before we can actually go ahead and install anything, we need to actually get SightLock, right? So as you know, SightLock from VibraLogix is a separate purchase from my SightLock stacks. Go ahead and go over to VibraLogix.com and go ahead and pick up yourself a copy of SightLock. Now, when you download SightLock, this is exactly what you're gonna be getting. You're gonna be getting a folder that has some HTML uh, demo examples, uh, the manual, obviously, which we're gonna look at in a second, uh, a members area, which has some more sample um, PHP forms. We're not gonna dive into those. And then we have our SightLock, uh, the actual application, okay, the SLPW folder, which is very important, okay? But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the manual. So here we are in the SightLock manual. And as you see, it is a manual. I'm obviously not gonna be going through every single page in this manual, but we are gonna skip straight down to the installation portion, okay? Very important because we need to get SightLock installed, okay? Make sure you review this uh, section uh, because you're gonna need to get SightLock installed. Obviously, I'm gonna show you how to do it, but please review the installation instructions on your own so that uh, you can go ahead and get everything installed. So right now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you go to your host and you set up a MySQL database, okay? I'm not gonna show you how to do that because every single host does it a different way, okay? A lot of them have little cool things in your cPanel that let you easily set up a MySQL database, okay? But please check with your host in terms of how to get a MySQL database installed on your server, okay? And then you need to get the credentials for that database, okay? You need to know the server name, the username, the password, and maybe even the port, okay? So make sure we get all of that information um, for your MySQL database. So first things first, we're gonna go into this SLPW folder that we saw earlier, okay? And we're gonna go all the way down to a file called slconfig.php. And you're gonna wanna edit this inside your favorite text editor or code editor, okay? So here we are, I opened up this file in my favorite editor called Sublime Text, and you'll notice at the very top of this file, uh, we have configurations for DB host, DB name, DB user, and DB password, okay? You're gonna wanna make sure you get all of this information from your host, okay, so that you can edit this file, okay, and put all of the pertinent information into that file. Save it and then we'll go to step two. So now what you wanna do is you wanna open up your favorite FTP app. Here I have transmit, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that SLPW folder that we just edited the SLconfig file in, okay? And we're gonna upload that to the top level of your website, okay? So here I'm uploading it to uh, Joe Work, sub sandbox.joeworkman.net and I've already uploaded it to the very top level of my website. So you'll see here I have the SLPW folder, okay? Now, if we look at the installation guide, the next step is we're gonna wanna open up our browser and go to yoursite.com slash SLPW slash install.php, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and install this on my sandbox server. Remember, the domain is gonna be you know pertinent to your actual domain. So you're gonna wanna substitute your domain in for that. So now that I've added that URL into my browser, SiteLock has actually gone and done its thing already very quickly. It gives us the link to go ahead and log into SiteLock uh, and the initial username and password is admin and let me in. So here I clicked on that link and let's go ahead and log in. And with that, you see that we now have SiteLock fully configured and we are done, right? Really simple. It already created, as you see, our first login, okay, which is admin, our passwords let me in. Um, you probably wanna change this information, obviously. You wanna, don't wanna have the default uh, password. You probably wanna put in maybe your name and your email address, okay? 
or you can just leave the admin, change the password, leave the admin account, and maybe create another admin account for yourself, okay, with your name, okay, just so that it's it's maybe a little bit cleaner. It's up to you. Uh, you can edit users by simply go ahead and clicking on this, and it'll take it to the edit user tab, okay, or the edit user page for this particular user, and this is where you can assign a random password and things of that nature, right? Uh, you can add them to groups and things and so on. Other things, we'll just get do a quick tour here. Um, if we go to user groups, this is where you can create your user groups, right? So by default, we have admin, all, and clients, okay? Um, maybe you have gold level, silver, uh, membership levels, or, you know, really groups are whatever you want it to be, okay? You're probably not gonna have too many. I like per personally keeping it simple, but um, this is where you can add new groups, and then you can obviously assign users to those groups as well. In the email templates, this is where you can um, load and save email templates. So email templates are in terms of, um, you know, forgotten passwords and, you know, reminding a user of his password and approving a user and re new registrations of users and things of that nature, right? This is where you can edit all of that information um, so you can customize those emails to your liking. Next, we have plugins. Now, I'm not gonna really review many plugins in this video, but SiteLock has a ton of plugins that you can install. Everything from managing user files to um, like a chat to um, integrating with Discuss and PayPal and Stripe and Cartloom, right? There's a lot of really great plugins out there for SiteLock. And we actually already have some stacks available for SiteLock that support three, currently three, the Blab, the Whois, and the user files plugins for SiteLock. So check those out. Next up, we have forms. Now, SiteLock has multiple types of forms. Um, you can have a login form, a registration form, an update profile form, so users can update their profiles, um, login forms, as I said, and then contact forms. In this particular video, we're gonna be reviewing the login form, okay? So here we can set the default login form, and you can see exactly what that looks like. So that pretty much does it for SiteLock, right? I mean, getting SiteLock installed is really the easy part, right? Now, I just breezed through the user interface really quick. I highly recommend you review the manual and learn how to use SiteLock, okay? Again, all that's completely separate from my stacks. It's just go ahead and review that SiteLock user manual that you got when you purchased it so that you can really learn how to use the tool. Master the tools that you have, okay? It's very important. It, makes your job a lot easier if you master the tools that you have, whether it's SiteLock, whether it's the stacks that you purchase, whether it's RapidWeaver, right? Take the tools that you, that you purchase and master them, okay? So tip of the day. Now let's go ahead and uh, jump into RapidWeaver and see how we can integrate the stacks uh, with SiteLock. So here we are in a sample RapidWeaver project that I created. It's nothing special. It just has some headers and some text and some placeholder images, right? Nothing too spectacular or fancy here, okay? But as you'll see in the stacks library, here's all of these stacks that currently ship with SiteLock. I'm sure over time, if you're viewing this in the future, there may be more, okay? But right now, uh, first thing we need to add to the page is the SiteLock prefix stack. This is the stack that basically controls all of the access privileges on the page, okay? So whether or not you want this group to be public, okay? Um, here I have an example of a gold group, okay? Um, right now, we're, we're not gonna limit to any groups like admin or gold. We're just gonna say blanket, just allow public on this page, okay, by default. If you wanted to limit this page to a particular user, you can do that as well. I recommend keeping with groups though. Um, it just makes it a lot cleaner to actually um, manage everything at the group level, okay? So what I wanna do is, let's go ahead and say this top content area, let's say I wanna make this a four members only. Maybe it's a message for my members or something like that, right? Okay, so this particular content area, um, if you view this web page, I only want members to see this particular content, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Visilock stack and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the page, okay? And we say here, the logic is when logged in, okay, show this message. Pretty easy, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show this message, okay? So uh, when the user when a user is logged in, doesn't matter what group they're in, right? Just if they're logged in, okay? Um, you can also see there's a lot of other uh, different 
logics available here. So member of a group, not logged in, things of that nature, okay? Now, what would be cool is what if I wanna say, if the user's logged in, go ahead and display this content or else go ahead and display the login form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and say include else logic. And if you see here, I'm like if true and else. So down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say forms. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the uh, forms here. So for this particular form, I wanna make sure we have a login form. Okay, if you see here, if I was gonna do a registration form or, or another one of those types of forms, I'd go ahead and select one of those, okay? Then you need to get the ID of the form. Now, how do you find the form ID? Let's go ahead and have a look. So if you log into SiteLock and then go into forms, login forms, okay? You'll go ahead and if you click edit form, you'll see that this says it's form ID five, okay? So inside this GUI, this is where you can actually create and style your forms and things of that nature. And then you'll, you'll find your form ID right here at the top of the editor. So now that we're back, back here in Rapweaver, I set my form ID to be five, okay? Which actually turns out to be the default ID for a login form, okay? So the default login form has an ID of five. So we are ready to go um, out of the gates with this, okay? So here, here's the logic we have, again, if we logged in, we're gonna display this four members only message, okay? And if we're not logged in, we're gonna display the form, okay? Um, one other thing is, what if if we're logged in, we want the ability to log out, right? So let's go ahead and uh, maybe we can create, add a little log out button up here as well, okay? Now, you, you, what you'll see here is the logout stack is just a generic um, drop zone area, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a button to that. So if we preview our page, you'll see that here we are, I have my logout button and I have my four members only, okay? Now, what if, like how do I preview the other information, right? So if we look at the site lock prefix stack, you'll notice that there is a setting called site lock visibility preview, okay? By default, it's set to true. This means you're going to be able to see all the true statements from the Visilock stack. Okay, if I toggle this setting to false inside the preview stack, all of the Visilock stacks will now show the else logic. Okay, so now that I set that to false, let's go ahead and preview our page. Okay, and here we have our login form. Okay, now this is just, maybe we wanna add a heading. Let's go ahead and add a quick heading, right? So we add drag and drop there. We say, please log in. Preview that. Okay, now we have a, at least a, a nice little header that says, please log in, right? We're not winning any style things here. This isn't about building a pretty page. This is just about integrating site lock into our site, okay? Um, so now let's go ahead and publish this and see it all in action. Now, actually, before I do that, I actually forgot to mention one other thing inside the prefix stack. You'll notice inside the prefix stacks, there is a site lock imports. Now on this page, we have a login form. Now I need to be able to import that inside the prefix stack so that all the libraries for that login form will be loaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and check login form, okay? Um, and then there's also an option here to redirect to a user group start page. So you can define like a page specifically for a group. And if a user from that group is logged in, it'll redirect them there, okay? I don't want this in this, in this instance, okay? Um, so I'm gonna leave that unchecked. Now, remember here, if you wanna import any of these other forms, okay, or plugins, so here's for the user files plugin, you're gonna make sure that you check this if you have it on the page. So if I have a contact form or a registration form or uh, you know, using the user files plugin, I'm gonna have to make sure that that, that that particular component is checked inside the prefix stack. So I've gone ahead and viewed this web page, and we'll notice now that I have this great login form saying, please log in, and let me go ahead and enter in my login information. So there we go, I've logged in, and there we go. I see my logout button, I see my four members only, right? And you'll see when I click that logout button, it refreshes the page and takes me right back to my login form. Now, I know what we just went over is very basic, right? But it gets you started. We got SiteLock installed, we got the stacks working and configured inside the Rapweaver project, and we did it all without zero coding. Okay, it's very simple, very easy to do. Okay, now there's obviously 
a lot of complex things if you're going to create a full-blown membership site. You probably want to lock down full pages, right? Deny access to particular groups, right? So that, you know, only particular members access these pages and some other members can only access these pages, right? So there's a lot of stuff here um, that you can build upon with the basics that I showed you here, okay? Um, I'm really excited about these stacks because it takes something that used to be complex and makes it extremely simple to implement, right? Really, as you saw, I just implemented user logins in, I have no idea how long this took, 10 minutes, right? 15 minutes, right? Very, very easy. It's very exciting that we can now do such things like this so easily and with so much power now with Rapid Weaver. So I hope you enjoy the site lock stacks. Hope you enjoy site lock. If you don't have a copy of it, go get it now because it's awesome, right? Uh, I'm going to be using a lot in my backend stuff in the future. So pay attention. Um, I'm all in, all in baby. So go ahead. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you appreciate it. Let me know if you have any more questions and comments and we'll talk to you later. Bye.